you, you look in Nashville, you've got churches from one end of the city to the other. And on fundamental issues, we disagree. And yet the same book is being preached from our pulpits. And I began to, I began to wonder, well, what's going on? It's not the book. The book is the same. Mm -hmm. What's going on the way that we interpret these it's texts? It's the interpretation of Absolutely. these books. Absolutely. Exactly. The and mm -hmm. so I wanted to study how African Americans historically mm -hmm. have interpreted the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the reason I, put the, I, I wrote Pillars of Cloud and Fire. Mm -hmm. um, it begins to look at, it begins to look at African American biblical interpretation mm -hmm. from the antebellum period, Good. starting with starting with slavery. And I look mm -hmm. at I look at various examples, an example, a radical example, and a conservative example mm -hmm. in in the antebellum period, beginning with um, Absalom Jones Good. and David Walker. Mm -hmm. I move on to look at Reconstruction with um, Francis Ellen Watkins Harper mm -hmm. and John Jasper, mm -hmm. the Harlem Renaissance where with um, Zora Neale Hurston. Mm -hmm. Then the era of civil rights with um, Adam Clayton Powell and Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. And finally, I look at the era of black power with Albert Clay. Mm -hmm. each, each one takes up the book of Exodus, mm -hmm. but takes it up in a very different way. And they take it up based on what I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. That is, what are the relevant challenges mm -hmm. that my community faces? Mm -hmm. How can I continue to make the word of God, the Bible, mm -hmm. relevant? And so during, during the uh, antebellum period, Absalom Jones and David Walker both take up the story of Exodus almost literally, mm -hmm. that if God delivered the children of Israel Good. from Egypt across yeah. the Red Sea mm -hmm. into the promised land, then God, then, then God will do the same. <laughs> and the promised land was freedom from slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, freedom from slavery came mm -hmm. and we weren't free. Mm -hmm. Uh, we face Jim Crow and segregation. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to, to the era of reconstruction uh, the pr and you look at sermons, the promised land doesn't doesn't look like freedom from slavery. Emancipation is no longer mm -hmm. is, no, is no longer identified with the promised land. Mm -hmm. Uplift is. Well, how do we how do we educate now? How do we move from just emancipation to education and the kind of cultural attainment that will lift? black communities. Mm -hmm. And after, after Reconstruction, that changes again in the Harlem Re Renaissance. This mm -hmm. idea that we need to throw off the manacles of slavery, the old, the old Southern sort of African-American rebirth and, and a rebirth. That's, that's right. right. The Renaissance yes. man, mm -hmm. uh, Renaissance man, Renaissance woman. But for the mm -hmm. Harlem Renaissance writers, for the most part, mm -hmm. except for Zora Neale Hurston, mm -hmm. they were really thinking rather in, in sexist terms. So mm -hmm. They were thinking the new Negro was mm -hmm. a new Negro man. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, but but Zorno Hurston, I thought, was 